Coming up on tonight's House of Tiny Tearaways. My worry, and this is where I'm going to hit you with something quite big, but when I see it with females and with food... You're going to say she can get anorexia or she's going to grow up with some eating disorder. Yeah. It, it could become a problem. It's the second day here at the House of Tiny Tearaways and after a chaotic observation day, it's now time for the hard work to begin. The Oshitolas, the Galtons and the Davis family arrived yesterday, desperate for clinical psychologist Dr Tanya Byron to help them with their children's extreme behaviour problems. With just five days left, all the families are hoping Tanya can turn their lives around in the House of Tiny Tearaways. It's nearly eight o'clock in the Davis bedroom and four-year-old Amelia has just woken up. Look at you. You just had the longest sleep in the world. Okay. Is that lovely? Okay, it's back to sleep. <laughs> my stomach hot from my breakfast. Are you hungry now? Should we go and have something to eat? Matthew and Natalie Davis have asked for Tanya's help with their daughter Amelia's eating problem. Stop it! The problem we have is that our, our daughter will only eat Marmite sandwiches. Mommy. They're worried that Amelia's very limited diet is having a bad effect on her health. Yesterday, Tanya was keen to observe Amelia's behaviour at mealtimes. Her parents offered her a variety of different foods at lunch and dinner, but Amelia refused to try anything new and went to bed on an empty stomach. It's breakfast time and Amelia is enjoying her usual bowl of cereal. OK, darling. <coughs> nice. You must be starving. You haven't eaten anything since yesterday morning. You must be very hungry. Are you going to eat something else today? Shall we? As Amelia finishes her breakfast, the Galtons are also up and playing in the lounge. Yeah. Let go. Let's go. Let go. Let Toby play with it for a bit. Yeah. Why have you got to mess it all up? Come here. Come here. Uh, no, you pulled him over. That was naughty, wasn't it? That was naughty, Joe. Right, no, when, I know he did, I know he did. All right, you go and sit on the sofa for two minutes. Hold on. Go and sit on... Right. <laughs> As Chris Galton times out his five-and-a-half-year-old son, Joe, over in the Oshitola bedroom, the family is still asleep. Michael and Kemi Oshitola arrived yesterday with their two-year-old son, Jesse. At home, bedtimes are a real battle as they struggle to settle Jesse before one in the morning. Exhausted, they want Tanya to help with Jesse's poor sleep routine and behaviour problems. Jesse also has eczema and although he went to bed last night at eight o'clock, his sleep was disrupted because of his skin irritation. The Oshitolas arrived yesterday with quite a severe sleep problem. Their two-year-old son, Jesse, goes to bed often at 1am. How was his first night in the House of Time Terror? <laughs> he fell asleep on his mother at um, 8 o'clock. But then there were huge periods of him, you know, being awake throughout the night and mum and dad sort of giving him a drink and, and um, Kemi obviously dealing with his eczema, lots of bandaging, lots of lights on, lights off. Sleep is not sleep for him. Nighttime isn't nighttime, it's just an extension of daytime really. How are you going to tackle that today? And are Michael and Kemi ready to go hardcore if that's what you'd like them to do? It's a 
tricky one actually because Michael has said to me very clearly I would like my son to fit around my routine understandable however is that right for their son developmentally I don't think so also Jesse sleeps in a travel cot in their bedroom I think we could almost be training him to sleep in a bed and finally, and I suppose more worryingly, I really need to get to the bottom of the eczema, so suddenly everything is becoming quite complicated. I need this open. You need it open? All right, let me do it for you. Well, can you do it yourself? Yeah. All right. As the Oshitolas look after Amelia and Lucas Davis, Tanya yeah. takes Mum and Dad, Natalie and Matthew, to the consultation room for a chat about their daughter's eating problem. In the house. And you both yesterday, I said to you, do what you would normally do. And you decided just to go for giving her something completely different at both meal times. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't eat it, you both decided to, right, that's it. So you didn't give her a sandwich or anything. It was a complete... She said nothing. So yeah. she didn't eat very much no. yesterday at all. No. And that shows me that she's pretty resilient, that she can actually go for long periods without mm. eating, mm. which give, tells me that we have to, that, that's quite an important issue to put yeah. into treating her. Now, um, can I ask you this? Would you say you're both high achievers? I mean, I would say you're both high achievers. Yeah, we have um, high aspirations to mm. be high, high yeah. achievers. Would you say you're both perfectionists? If you're going to do something, you're going to do it the, the best you can. It's going to look the best, it's going to be the best, it's going to... We'd probably slightly different angle on how we mm. would do that, but the ultimate aim would be the same. Have there been things in your life that you've wanted so much that you have made sure you've got them and you've got them? Him. <laughs> Him. <laughs> Matthew. Uh, okay. My dad always said he had no chance. <laughs> wow, that was the answer. <laughs> Sorry, just... <laughs> you knew then, didn't you? So you saw yeah. him and that was it, you were going to... We were only young, we were yeah. only right. 16, we were on holiday and I, yeah. <laughs> it was one of those, I knew that I wanted to be with him. And that can be like that in business as well. Now, what I need then to think about with you is about the problem and why the problem exists and how we can change it. I don't know if this is relevant, but I, from when she was born, I was very... Um, I always knew... I mean, we love our sleep. I mean, we, we're, we've always loved our sleep. So, for me, the most important thing about getting the, have, after having that baby was getting that baby sleeping through the night. So I was immediately very, you know, routine-like with her. And by seven weeks, she would sleep through the night. She was an angel baby, actually. We were very lucky, weren't we, with her? Yeah. And then, then she's obviously started weaning, and every, all the foods were absolutely fine. And then the moment that we started introducing textures, everything went wrong, and she'd just literally throw it up immediately. How did that make you feel? Oh, it's like frustration, but then you're, like, worry, because... I've got to get something down you. And so up until that point, she was just dream girl. Uh, just yeah. like, you do, start, she does, you yeah. do, yeah, she absolutely. does. Right. So then I'd start giving her a dry food, which would be I, I, a sandwich, like a, you know, a finger of sandwich, and she can sit and munch on it. I now know that was the fatal thing, because what happened was is you kind of enjoy the fact that your child is eating something when you know that you can't keep and get to keep anything down. So you go, oh, well, that's what she likes. And before you know it, you find you've got this yeast extract sandwich and a chicken and, you know, and chicken potato a fish form, type thing fish and and whatever, potatoes and... type of, um, of diet going on. As the kind of days and weeks and so on went on, was there as always a feeling of calmness and tranquility well, around I feeding doubt that times? I probably... No. What I see now is that Amelia has got into a battle with both of you. Mm. The, the, the meal table for her is a real battleground. You can see that. I can see her yeah, before, before she gets there. Mm. Just the mention of it, when she knows it's 15 totally. minutes, it's coming up in 15 minutes, she's, but your she's face setting is yesterday. her stall out. I mean, you couldn't have looked any more. Oh, completely. Look, that's just the sauce. It feels very emotional to me, this problem for Amelia. I feel that she's got into this space with you where she feels like she's letting you down. Mm -hmm. And I think at the age of four, she doesn't know how to deal with that emotionally. So she gets distressed and she gets cross and she just says no. Mm. My worry, particularly when you see this with, with... And this is where I'm going to hit you with something quite big, but when I see it with females and with food... You're going to say she's going to get anorexia or she's going to grow up with some eating disorder. Yeah. It, it could become a problem. Mm. Particularly if at four she can go to bed on no food. 
That for me is a bit of a worry because if she can be a restrictive eater at this age and it's about control and it's about emotion She'll and do that's it when what she's older. food there is she's yeah, got a greater chance and I think we have to think about that so carefully prognostically if I was to give you the kind of bullet point kind of list of girls who have more of a predisposition towards an eating disorder I would say it is something along the lines of girls from high achieving yeah it is sort of aspirational families where everything on the surface looks great, best academically, best at ballet, best at this, best at that. Can't take, take the pressure. Apple of daddy's eye, you know, little mini me of mummy, looks totally beautiful, but actually inside freaks out that one day they're going to make a mistake, mm. feels out of control, oh, and the only thing they can control therefore is what they put in their bodies. And it's particularly pressure. because well, already she has learnt not to eat, which mm. for a four-year-old shows a huge amount of control and is a concern I think we have mm. to be really, really honest about and look at. Mm. That's one of the concerns that I guess has led us to being, to being here, mm. is, you know, she's, she's four now and if it's nothing changes or, or, you know, we don't get a lot of change, by the time she gets to 10 or 11, then, then that's... That's a real concern. But it's not going to be a quick fix, I think. No. Amelia and food is going to be an ongoing issue in the sense that I think this week the best thing I can do is exactly what you've said with you. We can look at helping her relate to you and food and the table in a very different way. Mm. Mm. And that really means that for the minute I don't want to introduce <coughs> anything okay. new in her diet at all. I just yeah. want her to experience sitting at the table as a complete pressure-free zone. Yeah. Lots of happiness. Okay. And I don't think she's ever experienced that because I think she always feels when there's a meal, the spotlight is on her mm -hmm. and she has to perform. And this is the one area in her life that <coughs> she can't. And she sees that and so it builds. Okay. Are you okay with yeah. that? Yeah. So I'm not going to I'm not going to give you the solution you want. No. But I think it's but a it's much a much bigger picture. Yes. It's 10.30 and Joe Galton, Jessie Oshitola and Amelia Davis are playing on the sofas. <laughs> Jessie, come and get me! Jessie, come and get me! Jessie! Get me! Jessie, get me! Jessie, get me! Jessie, get me! Jesse, Jesse, it... come here. What's he doing? He didn't hit you, did he? Pull he... my top. He pulled your top. Oh, say sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right, good boy. Sorry. All right, all right. <coughs> Jesse, try and get me. No, 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 no. Try and get me. No, yes, no, yes, no, 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 no. As the Davis family keep an eye on Harry and his two brothers, parents Chris and George join Tanya in the consultation room. The Galtons arrived yesterday with five and a half year old son Joe, three year old Harry, and one year old Toby. At home, the family are in turmoil over Harry's constant tantrums and bad behaviour. So, how are you feeling about our first chat? Bit anxious? Sort of, sort of looking forward to it, sort of a bit anxious as well. Because I, th I think we are good parents, and other people have said we're good parents. And when we've said, there's one particular friend I was chatting to on the phone, and we were saying we were coming in, and said, Why? And we said, Well, Harry can be a bit difficult sometimes. Mm. And George had enough and, and emailed in, and she said, Boy, if anyone can deal with it, it's you two. Mm. So I can't think of any better parents. So I think we're out, people see us as that, but it's whether Do we actually are. Do you see yourselves as good parents? I yes. think we are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree with you completely. I think you are good parents. Media. Tell me the story of Harry's oh, no, beginning, like because it is very different to your other two sons, isn't it? With Harry, when I was 17 weeks pregnant, I collapsed. I was taken to hospital. Um, they did a series of tests, but couldn't really find anything wrong. But from there, I was having sort of blackouts. I just felt completely exhausted, more than just pregnancy exhausted. Just had absolutely no energy. And 
uh, just after my collapse at the side of the road uh, was the last time I saw my father. Um, him and my mum split up. I had a, I had a really close relationship with my dad. I always felt I had a very close relationship with my dad. It sounds to me that you have Harry and that period of your life. You were just you felt like you were battered from all sides. Completely. Do you feel that your mood has ever picked up since that point? I, I can't remember a time where I felt really, really happy. And what happens to you when you go low? And what do people around you experience? Well, I... maybe I should ask Chris mm -hmm. that. It's very noticeable when George is feeling low. Everything's my fault. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing anything around the house. I'm not looking after the kids. Why are you going to work? You should be at home looking after me and the kids. I'm worried that sometimes George will hear things and if she doesn't agree with it, no matter who says it or what they say to her, no, she's she's OK. She'll put is this front George on. OK? No, she's not OK. How not OK is she? Very not OK. Very not OK. <laughs> and you know that, cos I said to you about going to the doctors before, didn't I? Yeah. I kind of feel that you have, you've been treading on eggshells for a long time around George and you're very worried about her. You're worried about her mood. I think you think that George is depressed. Have I read you right? Am I in, am I in the right space? It's, it's fairly accurate, yeah. I, I am concerned about George and concerned about what it means for us. Um, Chris carries a lot of trauma himself that he will not talk about. He deals with a, st a lot of stuff. He's, he's a carer as well. You're right. He's a carer as well, and I think that's how he deals with his own unhappiness, is to care for others. My concern is that if the unhappiness that you have as adults you can't own and do something about, mm. it will be played out by one of your children, and I think that's what Harry's doing. Can I say to you, though, what I found interesting about what happened there? And you're not going to like this. <laughs> is that you were telling George how worried you were about her and how you th think she's been depressed. You look very cross because you don't want to be depressed. And you turned straight back into Chris and said, but he's got damage too. <laughs> and as soon as Chris started crying, you started to smile and move over and looked calm again. That's kind of a nervous smile, I think. Stops me from crying. But it's, I think it also stops you from having to take any ownership of what might be going on for you, because you can say, well, it's this person, this person and this person. And I think that's a very difficult thing to hear. But I think Harry is telling you that all is not well. And I think he's worried about you. Mm. So I'm asking you to think about this, really. Are we seeing a little boy who needs fixing, in words, I just tell you how to handle him better. I actually think you handle him pretty well when he has his tantrums. Mm. You give him more attention for his tantrums than you do for his good behaviour, because mm. you're both sitting there waiting for him to go into one. I think you're, you see in your son things that you feel in yourself and you're terrified for him. And so you're trying to make it all better. But in doing so, you're so wound up and agitated that he can sense that from you. And so the whole thing is getting worse. I do see him as very unhappy, and I want him to be happy. Mm. What is the best way for him to feel happy? To be in a happy environment, with us being happy. Following a difficult consultation with Tanya, the Galton family are on the sofas in the lounge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, yeah. you got Hey, sweetheart. Mum, mm. look, I put the lid on. You're doing lovely. Oops, a daisy. Why not? His behaviour's totally changed, hasn't it? I mean, when we remember the tapes of Harry at home, screaming, tantruming, being so particular, people watching him, waiting for him to kick off, mm. and then this smiley little boy. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Mm. Do you know how much I love you? Mm. Daddy? For Georgina to have this experience with Harry, look. Do you know I love you? <gasps> What's that? A daddy. A lolly. Do you know I love you? 
I mean, right. that's what it's all about. It's as simple as that. But of course, life complicates things and history complicates things and his behaviour has clearly complicated things. Yeah. But as long as everybody in their family, including themselves, George and Chris, think that Harry Galton yeah. is a monster, yeah. he will be a monster. Hello. Hello. Cool, hey. you're good looking. With Tanya's consultation fresh in their minds, the Davis family sit down for a more relaxed lunch. Is that nice, Lucas? Look at Lucas, he's just eating all the crispies. Yes, he's a sandwich first, but what I'm doing. Daddy, you must eat your last sandwich first. Why? The Hmm. Before crisps? Yes. I like to eat a bit of sandwich, a bit of crisps. Daddy always does that. And you see what else he does? He will save. Oh, wow. You will? Yeah. <laughs> Good. He will eat right down to the last little bit of sandwich. He'll have one crisp left. So he always gets a bite of both at the last bite. What taste to finish on? Sandwich or crisps? <laughs> Daddy or chips? Daddy or chips, Amelia? Yeah. Which is the best, daddy or chips? Daddy! Yeah. So let's just watch the Davis lunchtime. Since the, you had the consultation with them, you sort of told them to relax, and it's not necessarily about her changing what she eats, but it's her changing how she feels at the dinner table, am I right? Yes, totally. I think, I mean, we're looking at a very relaxed mealtime because she is given food that she likes, but also that I think she knows that she can eat. Yeah. This is a completely different feeding story to any feeding story we've seen in the house before. And I think because of that, it's a much more complicated story. Any parent who wants to look at changing a particular behaviour that is difficult with their child needs to recognise is there is always a story. It yeah. is not just about a kid being bad. Yeah. It's about what is driving the behaviour. And I think literally this girl does gag when something new goes in her mouth because she's so scared she can't swallow it. It freaks her out. It comes up because she doesn't want to let her parents down. Yeah. Actually, what's got to change is the fact that they've got to stop caring what she eats. Mm. I mean, I do think that they are anxious, nutritionally anxious about Amelia, and I think we just need to look at that to kind of relax. I mean, I've got the list of what she eats here and there is a spread. She does a little bit of fruit, she does dairy, she does carbs, she does protein. There's quite a good range and I think we just need to really look at that, see it for what it is, celebrate that, get mealtimes feeling more relaxed and then think of a much more fun and creative way to encourage Amelia just to have a, another food on her plate, even if she doesn't have to eat it, as the first step towards broadening her diet. I think we live in a culture where the images around particularly females are very much about body and size and shape and eating. And I think then if you put all that together, the last thing you want for your beautiful daughter yeah. is to have an issue at the meal table. And if she's eating enough, and she is eating enough in terms of the range of foods, let's just leave it there and relax. Because if we push it any harder, my fear is that she'll start to eat less of what she's eating, and already that is quite limited. After lunch, all the children are playing round the activities table. That's pink. Get all the pink stuff together, and then we'll see what colours are left. Okay. Right, you ready? Are you ready? That's it, you got that one right. You doing that pink. I'll do that. Go. together. <laughs> All right. Now that George has calmed three-year-old Harry down, Tanya joins them in the bedroom to give advice on how to get Harry to play nicely again with the children in the lounge. When he's calm, I think we go down and you get Jesse over and you say to him, you play nicely with Jesse, you do not snatch toys. Hmm. And, and Jesse's there and it's all right. 
you know, have a hug, right. Yeah. And then you could set up a game with the two of them, maybe get a ball and they could throw it to each other so he can see that it's fun with Jesse. And also then you're like saying, good boy, well done. So then he gets a very clear message. If he doesn't play nicely, yeah. where does he come? Harry, if you don't play nice, we'll have to come back in here again. What is this, Mummy? Harry, Mummy's talking to you. I think you could probably be a bit sterner with him, actually. Mummy. Harry, Mummy's talking to you. If you don't play nice, where will we come? Back in here. Good boy. All right. There's a good boy. Let's go find a game we can play with Jesse then. Yeah? Are you going to come and help me choose? Mm. Oh, right, what are we going to play? Should we find a game to play with Jessie? Yay. Let's go and see Jessie, shall we? Hello, you darling. Are oh, you? Right. right. Jessie? Oh, Harry, going to play a game with Jessie? Yay! Yeah. I want the game! If you don't stop, we're going to go back to the bedroom. Right, what game can we play with Jesse? Oh, look at these blocks. I hate these blocks. No, look, see if we can spell your name out and spell no. out Jesse's name, shall we? No, my name. Can you see a huff for Harry there? That's it, just keep ignoring and keep Jessie, going. It's good. Not here. good. Good boy, Jesse. Hello. Jesse, can you find, can you find a juff for Jesse? Do you know, it's also a juff for Joe. And, right. and Jeff for Joe. It's a different jerk though, isn't it, for Georgie? Yes. Let's see if we can find a jerk for Jesse. Well, look, we found a tougher train. And now that he's come, try and include him. What have you got there, darling? It's now that he's come. What's wow, Harry, what have you got? Nothing. What colour's that block? Red. One red. It's All right, we'll leave him to red. chill. He needs a bit more chill out time then, so you can. Yeah. Do you see what we're doing? We're trying to red. engage him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not red. Where's the red block? Can you see a red one? It's red. Oh, look. Harry's got, red Harry's got a red one. And Harry's got a red one. You've got a red block. And do you red. see what that letter is? What's that letter? Harry. Her for Harry. Well done, Yay. Harry. Yay. Yay. It's the second day in the house of Tiny Tearaways for the final week's families. After initial day of observation, it's now time for Dr. Tanya Byron to begin treatment. The Davis family have come into the house for help with four-year-old daughter Amelia's fussy eating. She has a limited diet and, if given the choice, will always eat yeast extract sandwiches. This morning, Tanya told Mum Natalie and Dad Matthew that in order to improve mealtimes, they have to relax, or the problem could become even worse. Georgina and Chris Galton are seeking help with middle son Harry's bad behaviour and constant tantrums. Life at home is stressful for everyone, including his brothers, five-and-a-half-year-old Joe and one-year-old Toby. The morning's consultation revealed the time around Harry's birth was traumatic for the family. Can Tanya help them move on from the past and start feeling more positive towards Harry? Michael and Kemi Oshitola struggle to sleep through the night thanks to two-year-old son Jesse's poor and disruptive sleeping routine. Last night, Jesse's sleep pattern was worse than usual due to a flare-up of eczema, keeping his parents awake until 4.38 a.m. Will Tanya be able to get Jesse sleeping in his own bed by the end of the week? Still to come. I could take criticism about me. Criticism about my children I find incredibly difficult. While Jesse is watched by the other families, Michael and Kemi Oshitola talk to Tanya in the consultation room. You are here because of your son's sleeping problem. Mm. I did see a very action-packed night. Yeah. Is that fairly representative of what you have to deal with most of the time? Um, it depends. I wouldn't say to the same degree as last night, I think, because he's got, like, a rash which come on last couple of days, so he's probably a bit more irritable than normal. As an average, what sort of time, on average, is he going to sleep at home? About midnight. 
Well, yeah, I would say we'll try... I say try and set them down. From about 11 o'clock, we are talking, like, bedtime. Yeah. I mean, how bad do you think his sleep problem is? Um, I don't know. In 1 to 10, probably about 7. What do you think? Um, <laughs> I think the same as well. You think the same? You don't yeah. think it's worse than that or better than that? Right, OK. I think he's got a really, really bad sleep problem. I'd almost put it up there with the tenors, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. Basically, what you have is a child who is living... Uh, he's living a two-year-old's day, but it's all at completely the wrong time. And that's what your problem is. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, so. I'll have to agree with you, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> OK. I think my concern is, is that you fitted your child into your schedule rather than fitting your schedule around your child. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair assumption. Right. You said to me, I so said you have a nine-to-five job. So what yeah. time do you finish work, generally? Uh, about six o'clock. And how far away from your home do you work? Um, get home time, probably about just after seven. Just after seven, OK. So would it be such a bad thing to think about him going to bed, let's say, if you came home and did the whole kind of bath and bed thing, which a lot of a lot of dads do, yeah. sometime around eight-ish. I'm looking at eight o'clock, him going to bed, and I'm pretty certain, as he is now, I mean, take away the scratch and all the rest of that, he won't go to sleep at that time. No, because you've not taught him how to do that. Yeah. But that's the job that we have this mm. week. But my next big problem I have yeah. is the fact that he doesn't know what it means to go to sleep. His association with falling asleep is your body's. Yeah. OK. So you've taught him that the only way he can go to sleep is either to be held or to lie next to you. Mm. So the only way we're going to teach him to fall asleep on his own is for him to unlearn that by us putting him in a very different situation and finding a way of managing him because he's going to find that very difficult. Yeah. Mm. Right, OK. I am concerned that while he continues to sleep in your room and he can hear you and he can smell you and he can feel you yeah. in the room... That association will always be will there. Will always be there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you're more than probably right. Now, this throws another massive ball in your court, basically, because you live in a... You've got, you've got a beautiful flat, I've seen it, but it's a two-bedroom flat and the other room your brother lives in. Yeah. It was Jesse's room, but now your brother has it. Yeah. So then I ask you another question. We can sleep train him to our heart's content in this house by having him in the room next door to you, by giving him his own room, which is a much better way of yeah. doing it. However, is what are you going to do when you go home? Because if you go home and you stick him back in your room... You might as well have not been here at all. And so I... we leave the room for Jesse for now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you leave your bedroom. Yeah, we we can out the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I I understand what you're getting at, friend. You know, I mean, as it is right now, you know, he will not have his own room when we get back home. Why can't he have his room that is his room and the person that's in his room sleep on a sofa bed in the sitting room? Why are you prioritising their needs over his? He's your son. Where is he going to sleep when sleep, he gets home? Yeah. That's the big That's question. It. Yeah, it's my brother. I can't just kick him out and say, yeah, sorry. I mean, he, he pays his own rent there as well. Would you consider sleeping on a sofa bed in the front room so that he could have a room? I would. I yeah, I mean, to you. me, that would be an <laughs> easier... I would do that because... Um, it would be an easier solution yeah. in the short term yeah. than... Sure. While you're I mean, looking to move. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. The last thing we want to do is waste this opportunity we've got by coming here in the first place, we want cool. to use it to the fullest and, you know, that's what it's going to take, that's what we'll do. Right, well, let's train him in the bed then. Mm -hmm. So we'll do tonight, have his supper ready for 6.30, OK? Play until about 7, 7.15. Nice bath at 7.30. Creams, bandages, but everybody's very relaxed, the lights are down low. Yeah. Into his room. Story, drink. Good night, darling. Down and then just sit a bit away from the bed and look away, and we'll see what happens. And right. then once we've done the first part of the night, then we have to decide who does the next part of the night, and you have to do exactly the same thing. And you will be exhausted tomorrow, and yeah. he will be a bit, whoa. So you've got to be strong. Mm. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. I'm sure okay. we can. <laughs>
Tony wants to find out if George and Chris Galton agree about the way in which power is distributed between themselves and the boys. She's asked them to build a tower using building blocks that represent the individual members of the family. They must place the person with the least power at the bottom and the person with the most power at the top. First to have a go is 38-year-old dad, Chris. Talk us through what, how you made that decision. Mm. I think Joe gets, because of the attention that Harry gets and Toby being the younger baby, he gets least attention and I, I have a certain amount of control over Joe. So I think that, therefore, I'm above Joe. Mm -hmm. I think Toby is, is a young kid, he needs a lot of attention, mm -hmm. so he's above me really. Harry, because he demands a lot more attention of the way he is, he's mm -hmm. a lot more difficult to handle than George because she is at the top of the tree, <laughs> in charge. Next up, it's Mum George's turn. <laughs> Very different, very different. Although you both agree that, Chris, you're somewhere near the bottom yeah. of the pile. OK, so how, how do you see this, George? I put Chris at the bottom because a lot of the time he is out of the house and his play. Kids see him as play. So as it such. doesn't, it's not, you don't feel it's power, so that's why he's there. Yeah. OK. Toby, I think, gets quite left out within the family. I mean, he needs his needs met and that's in my opinion, that's pretty much all he gets. Um, missing me out, not for any significant reason, but just because I wanted to explain the bigger deal. Yeah. I feel that those two suit do very much sort of control, you know, wh what they say, don't, don't necessarily always get, but they're always demanding, they're always wanting something. Um, Harry more so, but Joe is, I, I don't think, that far behind. And I, I, I think I've kind of got middle, middle power. I don't think I'm... I think they, you know, some, I, I'm, hands up, and I'm the first to say that sometimes, you know, I just say, oh, for God's sake, fine, just do whatever you like, you don't listen to me anyway, you know, just go and have a bag of crisps, forget that dinner's going to be on the table in ten minutes, just, just shut up, mm -hmm. just leave me alone, because it's just constant at me with these two, and I guess sometimes my priorities are a bit misguided. So there are splits in the parenting in terms of the way you both have a perception of how to manage yeah. the kids' behaviour. I mean, if we were to actually restack these blocks slightly differently, just on the grass, mm. so if we were just to take them down, I mean, the thing we all it seems that you both agree on is that this yeah, little this chap is, is very is. powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you both agree that you are kind of down in the right. pecking yeah. order somewhere. But the rest is a bit more of a movable feast. Yeah. But if we were to sort of take all the blocks off and just putting them on the ground, how... If we just kind of stack, stack them on the ground, so you can either have people next to each other or you can have people on top of each other. How um, how do you think it, it it should look in order to make it function best? That's easy. It should be a circle. Hold on a second. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Take it one at a time. You do. I... Right. What do you think? I think we should all have equal power. So how Parent, do you... Parents obviously have more say, parents I suppose. Parents need but to have yeah, more power. We do pa need to have more parents say. Parents need to be... But, I mean, in terms of position in the family, <coughs> children also need to think to feel that they have a valid input as well. They do. They're not... That's not as low as they can get. No. That is that we should be the guides... You know, we yeah. should be the ones, the teachers. you know, that, no, you can't have this, and for that to be accepted. We should always be, it should also be somewhere where they feel safe, where the circle's safe. But then in a circle, let's, OK, let's make it into a circle. How would you make it into a circle, then, just like this? Yeah. Kind of round. Yeah. Round. Like this, OK. Yeah. But then closer together, yeah. But, OK, yeah, closer but together. together. But we shouldn't have equal power to the children. So then what? OK. So what are you thinking? We shouldn't have equal power to the children. We should be more powerful. I guess my question is, where is the authority in that setup? Right. Yeah. But first of all, who's next to each other, who can support each other, and who can make a decision in terms of how to manage the kids? No one. You have a stronger sense of authority, I think, 
than maybe you do. Which is strange, because you always said that I was the stricter one. <laughs> but uh, I may, maybe authority isn't about being right. strict and disciplinarian. Yeah. It's just yeah. about uh, understanding yeah. how a right. system works. I'm curious whether when you were a child, you know, what your experience of... I had quite a firm upbringing. When I look back at my childhood, the times I can remember are more about being told off rather than not being told off. Right. I in fact, I can't remember anything other than being that told off. That still goes now yeah. as well. Right. So, for you, this, this scenario... For you, this scenario doesn't mean authority, it means domination. And I guess I, I do agree with you, George. I think that this would be a balanced family in the sense that the boys are on the a, on, on a same level, there is author, or, authority, but you are just one yeah. whole unit. I think that challenges you because any time an adult is above a child, that brings up your own issues. It seems to me that Harry's behaviour is very interesting to me because his behaviour is crying out to be managed. Yeah. But what we've learnt from this sort of uh, totem pole here he's is doing that... the managing. Pardon? He's doing the managing. He's completely doing the managing. Yeah, his parents are both below him. His parents are both below him. And it's not about us trying to be completely dominant, but it's about me helping you find a way of agreeing you agree he's a problem, but you definitely don't agree on what the solution is. And if we can agree that, I, I think then that is what we're aiming for. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Amelia, do you want to try these? No. I made them for you, especially for you, chippies. I don't like these chippies. It's dinner time for the Davis family. This evening, as well as allowing daughter Amelia to eat food she's familiar with, parents Natalie and Matthew have introduced baked beans to the meal in order to see how their daughter responds. Tanya has joined the family armed with some stickers to reward Amelia for trying the food. Hello, little lady, lady, lady. But they're on your plate, aren't they, which is very clever. I'm not going to eat this one. It has beans on it. Right, well, the thing is, you see, I've got some stickers and I would happily give you a sticker, but I need you to show me what you can do. So can you show me, for this sticker, how big girls can eat a piece of their chicken? I don't like chicken. You don't like chicken, so you don't want the sticker? No? I want one tomorrow. You want one tomorrow. Well, how about, can you pick up the chicken and put it against your mouth and just kiss it and put it back down again? OK, so then you I can get a stick. Yes, you stick. can. Good girl! Oh, Do we give you a clap good. and a sticker for doing Yay. that? Show me one more time, just so I can be really clear. Show me one more time. Good well girl! Done. Good girl! Well done! Good you girl, definitely Amelia. get the sticker. Which one do you want? Did we say this one? Yes. Big clap for you, you oh, clever well girl. Awesome. Good, girl. well done. Very, Amelia. very good girl. For that sticker, what are we going to do on this plate? You show me. Can we pick this up and lick it? Not with the beans. I can't see any beans on it. There's a clever girl. Oh, my... No! <laughs> no, you didn't do that. No, you didn't do that. No, you didn't do that. You are amazing. Show me... No, you can't do it again. No! <laughs> don't do it! No! <laughs> OK, in a minute, I'm going, to, I'm going to close my eyes and I bet you can't finish it. No, you can't. No, you can't, because they're my stickers and I want to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm going to be losing lots of stickers here. Which one do you want? I think... Oh, just my favourite one. Good girl. Well done, well done, done you. Done. Well done, you. Can you see what I'm trying to do here? Now, she wasn't going to eat the potato because it had beans on it, yeah. but it was relatively easy to get her to do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's what she knows. So I think that's what we've got to work with, what she knows. If she picks up something and if she just kind of kisses it and puts it down, she can have a sticker. You know, it's just kind of yeah. tiny, tiny steps. Yeah. But I think really well, she it? did do oh, well. And yes. I think this is quite a new experience yes. for her. It's yeah. very <laughs> So I'm going to give these stickers 
To mummy and daddy. Right, they're mine. Thank you. Okay, I'll leave you together. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> they're mine. <laughs> Having demonstrated the technique, Tony leaves the family to have a go by themselves. So, what shall we do? What for you about for to you? Get that third sticker. Mm, I don't know. What would be a good thing for you to do? Pick that one up and nibble your corner. Not eat it. No, you have to eat it all. Just Pick it up. Bit of sauce. And nibble. <gasps> Good well girl! Done. Well done, Amelia. Now, for one more sticker, why don't we try something with the beans? No! No, no, no I didn't mean... You didn't have to eat them. I just meant, why don't you pick them up on your fork? Um, OK, fine. It doesn't matter. I just thought maybe you might like one more sticker. Oh, yes. OK, what are you going to do, then? Yay! Yeah. Right. Good girl. There we go. And then you get one more sticker. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Night, night, boys. It's 8 p.m. and all the children are going to bed. Tanya is helping Michael and Kemi Oshitola put Jessie's new sleep routine into practice. Where's Jessie going to go to bed? Bed. This is Jessie's big bed. Big. Is yeah. that your big bed? Yes. Yeah. Good boy. We're giving him new sleep associations, yeah. which is bath, calm, songs, mm -hmm. and then story, and then bed. Good boy. And I think that when you lie him down, so you read the story yeah. here, you sit here, he's here, on here, and then when you say good night, Jesse, which one are you gonna? Which one of you is gonna do this? Read the story and stay with him. You do it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, you yeah. got it really, really calm. So then, mummy comes in and gives a kiss, and then you say, "Time to go sit," and you lie him down. And because he's used to having you near, you just lie. You just kind of be near him, but look away so he okay. can feel it. And if he sits up, he's like, "You're gonna have to keep going." Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, put down. him down. Listen, we might be here for four hours. But it's training, do you understand? And this is quite a big training. But I think to have you near him is going to be easier. Hey. So you could like sit next to him and hold him against your body, which is what he's used to. That's what we know he's used to. No. No. Come on, read you this. No. Yeah. Bring your bottle, bring your bottle. You want it. Yeah, you want it, son, don't worry. Look at this. It whipped her over snowy mountain peaks and into oh, thick flock. Because he's going to sleep, lie him down, say good night, and give him a kiss, turn off the light, and then just go and sit near him because he's going to sleep. Right. Yes, it's time to go to bed now. Let good me give boy. you a kiss. Yeah? I oh, don't. No. give you a kiss. Let me give you a kiss. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just hold him and lie with him. Just lie with him. Just no. lie down with him. No. Just hold him in your arms. He just needs to lie with you. No. In the no. Would he settle better with his mum? No. No. I think you need to do this. You're going to have to fall asleep with him in the bed, but you're going to have to hold him in your arms in the bed. And just give him a kiss and calm him down. After 15 minutes of trying, Kemi gets Jesse to sleep. The Oshitolas join Tanya in the lounge to discuss their progress. But I have to say, this is a child who spends up to midnight going completely bonkers. Because yeah. if we 
to put Jesse to sleep now. He's tired, but he will still go on. Yeah, yeah as long as he thinks other things yeah. are going on, he's yeah. still go on. And also, why do you think he didn't protest so much? Because no, I think he's just naturally exhausted. I mean, he hasn't slept at all today. So long as he's got your body, it should calm him down like yeah, it did tonight. Right. But don't kind of get too physical with him, okay. just go shh, 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 and just try and keep him. I mean, this could take such a long time, we might only do the beginning in the house, yeah. but at least we've changed his routine, we're, we're getting him into bed on time, Sure. which is a big thing for this little chap. Yeah, definitely. Pleased. <laughs> you pleased? Yeah. Yeah, you're not so sure. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, like I said, I reserve a judgement for now, to be honest with you. Um, Why? Why are no, you so doubtful? Because the thing is, to him, I don't think that's any difference of being our bed is in, it's just that we're not there. I think, you know, because we could have done that in our bed, for instance. So I don't think he really knows the difference. Yeah, I think by tomorrow now, he will do. Michael and Kemi Oshitola are in the lounge, talking to Natalie Davis. We're just trying to get him to associate sleep with his own bed and that as opposed to being with us, so... But, the, I mean, even though I know you said he's tired, it is a really... It's a good thing that he's actually gone down in a different bed, isn't it? Because mm. you said he normally goes down in your own bed. I mean, I can't see this happening overnight, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't know whether a week would be long enough. I think the only thing I'm worried about is when we get home and then we'll put him to sleep and you still want to watch TV and... You yeah, I mean, turn it I down because you I, like I, your volume quite high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like, Chandler, it's not loud. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's to do with our lifestyle. I mean, I don't doubt that for a second. Absolutely. You know, and that's something we, I've said for a while, that me and Kem need to change, or she'll say, I need to change, and um, she's probably right, I do. You know, it's... Um, we just try and focus more on him and his well-being as opposed to, you know, how we live our lives and thinking that Jess would be right, which is not the case. Well, that's it, you know. Just, But then find the balance. Hopefully, yeah, you balance. might find... It. There well, is yeah, a balance. there is a balance, because you, you have to let go of some that, things, I think. Yeah, and he'll... When he then goes to bed, if he... When you get into the point where you're sitting there like this in an evening, mm. you're then going to have more energy, so then you yeah. can think you could have... He would be able to sleep through, and then you can have a few friends over, or you can sit yeah. there and have a... <coughs> catch up with each other, have a yeah. couple of drinks, and feel like you've got an evening to mm -hmm. be yourself. You can go and have a good time. What, what you just described there is exactly what we're looking to achieve mm. in this Jimmy. Yeah. That's how we'll get our lives back and not have to put so much... Have Jesse put so much pressure on Australia and us to be making sure he's yeah. all right yeah. all the time. If we'd done this from the start, from day one, it wouldn't have got like this. Yeah. With all three of their children tucked up in bed, George and Chris Galton chat in the garden. I feel like I was telling you for a long time that things were difficult with Harry and I needed you to support me. I've built up this thing that people just don't seem to like him. So they, they tell me they like him, they tell me he's adorable, they tell so me... So why know, don't you believe... So why is it you believe the people that say, oh, God, he's a handful, and you don't believe the people that say, isn't he lovely? I guess it's the people that I class as... their opinion I class as, as important. Not... I'm not disregarding everyone else's opinions, but people who I guess I kind of look to for reassurance. I tell you, I could take criticism about me. Criticism about my children, I find incredibly difficult. People can compliment me, um, tell me what a wonderful parent I am, what a wonderful person I am, how nice my hair looks, what how nice my clothes are. It means nothing. I can't help it. It just doesn't mean anything to me. Well, yeah, I think you're true, because I'm saying you hear people that criticise you, why is it always pick up on the people that are criticising rather than the people that are saying positive? Because there are loads more people saying positive stuff. It's funny, because I do it's see me, myself oh, as a good parent. Stupid. You are. I, I do you're see myself mom. as a good parent. I do see myself as an... A, uh, I appear to be a likeable person, although I don't always believe that people you're a like me. dragon. Just two hours after being put to bed, Jesse Oshitola has woken up. Oh, no. Mum Kemi is the first in to settle him.
40 minutes later, and a frustrated Kemi calls Dad Michael in to help. Over an hour after Jesse first woke, Michael finally gets him settled. But will the two-year-old continue to stay in his own bed through the night? Coming up tomorrow. Sitting here, knowing why you've come into the house, I'm thinking if you want your son to stay in his bed, because that's what you want, he has to accept your authority. Yeah. And you have none with your son. You want that? I wouldn't say that's true, but I mean, that's it's what you're saying. It's completely true. It was quite extraordinary. 